Hello everybody, welcome back. We are on part three of our denim journal. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start choosing the papers to go inside the journal. This is going to be a one signature. So I thought I'd just bring you guys along. I want this to be a complete start to finish on this project. So I have already pulled out um, papers. These are antique papery. I've decided to use this because I, I didn't want it to just be pinks. I wanted some blues with the denim. And uh, these papers just really suited it. So what I've done, I took a... Um, music sheet. I've went ahead with some of the off cuts from these when I trimmed them down. I trimmed these down to four and a half by six. I just went ahead and made a little pocket there. And then I've got uh, some plain papers. I've got some book pages that I'm going to include. i just got to make sure that everything's going to fit in here. And so what I'll do is just go ahead and start. Um, and I did tear with my paper ruler. Some of the edges. I've got some old ledger. This one I'll probably make some long pockets on. But I'm just going to start um, placing these together and see what I end up with. This was some old paper I ran across at my um, father-in-law's. Um, we, you know, I told you we recently cleared out my mother-in-law and father-in-law's house, and you can tell. Look at the the lines aren't even straight on it, but I loved it. So, just going to add some of that in. And yeah, just got a mix of papers. I got some uh, French book page because I'll probably come back, add some pockets to this, and um, just try to mix it up a little bit. This is uh, uh, one of the mailers, and this one has been tea dyed. This is I purchased this from Hannah in the UK. I love that. So I'm going to add that so that'll be a nice pocket. So I just want to get a nice mix of papers. Um, And then if it's too thick, I can always come back and take some of these out. But I want to try to get in as many as I can. And then I'll start pulling them out and we'll do some stenciling and stamping on here. this out because that one's quite a thick page so I'm going to pull this one to the front. I don't think I need that sheet so I'm just going to Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty pages. I don't want that at the center, I know that, so I'm going to swap that around. 
and I'll have the avocado one at the as my center page. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to now start pulling some of these out. And do a little bit of stenciling on them. Did a little bit of stamping up there. I just found this little stamp. You know, I use this one along the top quite a bit, and I've had so many people ask me about this, but this was an unbranded stamp that I bought years ago. And this little one was in the same set, and I don't know why I've never used it. So I just found that, and I love that little stamp little stamp, so I'm going to start using that. Those torn edges, I'm just going to ink a little bit. I just think they look really pretty. Okay, so we'll just slowly go through this and um, let me do a little stenciling on this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put some stenciling on this book page. I think that would be pretty just to break that up. The book pages, I tend to come back and use those as my place to add... Um, pockets and things. Not always. Sometimes I leave them plain, but they seem to lend themselves really nice to layer your pockets on. So just a little bit more stenciling. Because I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I don't think that far ahead. <laughs> just winging it again. <laughs> Just that's just how I, I operate, and uh, it doesn't always work out. But you won't ever see the ones that don't. I, I generally, they'd end up in the trash bin. I used to try to save stuff and think, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I'll correct that. But you know what? It just got to be too much. Um, whoops, that's the wrong ink. I, it just got to be too much, and I don't know about you, but I'm um, the type of person, if I've got too much stuff hanging around, it stops my creativity, so I just spin it now. Because if it didn't come out, I, look at that, that's why that didn't come out, I inked it up on that one. Um, this is why it's so hard for me to work, and film guys <laughs> it's honestly you just have no idea what a challenge this is for me it does not come natural I'll tell you okay let me ink this edge off a bit I really do like these edges distressed with the it makes them look a lot older Yeah, normally when I'm creating, I've got 
music on or some of my people that I watch on YouTube, I might get them. Not not necessarily crafters because the crafters, I try to watch those when I can be fully focused. But it just, I don't have that much time. I'm so far behind on um, the people I watch. It's just getting crazy, but I'm not going to do anything on that one. Uh, let me just add a little stamp to this. Um, some of the people I like to watch are my outdoorsy folks. And um, even though um, I'll have to go back because I miss it when you know you're working, it's just sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of sound going on in here. Oh, that's two sheets. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, I'll put that in somewhere else because I like those to kind of break things up. Let me stick that somewhere. So even now, I have to, from time to time, go back and um, and watch them. But normally it's just music. I'll have music going on in the background. That way I don't feel like I'm missing anything. But yeah, making conversation while I'm doing this, I don't know. It just... Uh, well, I struggle to make conversations at the best of times. I'm just not, I'm not a really a talky kind of person. I mean, sometimes I get super chatty over something I'm passionate about, but most of the time I'm pretty, pretty quiet. Paul does most of the talking in our family. And I tell him that all the time. I'm like, oh, you talk a lot. And he seems to get really chatty at night. Whereas I'm a morning person, so it's like after 6 o'clock at night, guys, I'm useless. Don't even talk to me. I, I, I'm serious. It's just like I am, I'm just, I'm done. My batteries are dead. So, and that's when he just whine, you know, he just is getting going at, at evening time. So, it's funny. Okay, where is my cup? I want to make sure that that one is a little bit tall. I want to make sure. Oh, yeah, I better trim that down. Okay, this um, vintage <clears throat> ledger page, I'm going to trim that down just a tad. There we go. That's better. Alright guys, let me get everything together. I'm going to go ahead and sew this in and then we can start working on some embellishing. So let me gather all my supplies and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I've got everything here and we're going to get this going. Okay, I want to tell you another little thing that is an option for some of you. If you're struggling with your... I mean, this is quite a lot of papers. I wouldn't normally use this, but I want this to be a nice chunky journal with a lot of writing space. Another thing you can do is take maybe three sheets at a time. You could go four if you want to. And go over to your sewing machine and stitch those and do them in sections of three to four. It will help you um, because you, if you have had trouble with your paper shifting, that will help to stop that. So that's just another little thing I thought I'd share with you guys. Um, let me check that paper there. That's still... I'm going to trim this down. That's bugging me. It's, it's way overlapping. So let me just trim that off. So um, just keep that in mind. That's another thing you can do. I considered doing it with this one, but I didn't. Um, but 
I probably should to keep it just makes it easier when you go to sew, sew it in and it also reinforces um, those pages they're you know they're going to be there for sure so just that's another little tip you can just take them like I said three to four at a time and do a straight stitch down the center and then get them back into the order that you want and then then sew them in so <clears throat> Okay, again, I'm going to do a five-hole pamphlet. So I just, I just mark my, I'm going to do it at one and two. You got to have one of these if, if you're new to journal making. These are so handy. Okay, so now let's get our holes patched. Now I'm going to punch these before I put them into the journal, just because I want to make sure that I've absolutely got that right on the um, the crease there, because the, these are so thick, um, they will have a tendency to want to slip, slip around a bit. So I want to do this first, and then I'm going to put it into the journal cover because I want to make sure, because these stitches are going to show, I want to make absolutely certain that this is a straight stitch. I'm just going to get those holes pushed all the way through. Just, just makes it easier when you put that needle through. Because you're dealing with so much, um, it's quite thick, this one is, but I think it's going to be nice. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is get that lined up, because I want to make sure I, I, because of the way that I've made this spine, this has got to be absolutely perfect, otherwise that stitching is going to show if, it, if it's not straight and I am not going to be happy with that. So now I'm going to clip that just so that I know that that's not going to shift any. Gosh, I hope that hasn't slipped. It looks like that one may have Ooh, I hope not. Let me take this off. No, I guess it hasn't. It's just the way it looked. Okay, that's fine. Alrighty, this is the part I get nervous on with um, with these spines. Now, you know, just bear in mind, if you mess it up, you can always pull it back out <coughs> and redo it. Or you could always add a strip of something to cover it, but I don't want to in this case because it's such a pretty doily. I, I want to make sure I get this right. Okay, here goes. Here it goes, because the thing is, you can punch these holes through, and you still oftentimes can't tell until you actually run that stitch through. And with these fabric ones, when you've got a lot of lace, it's not easy to see where you've punched your hole. This one will be, because of the way I've made it. But I have had journals in the past where, boy, it's a struggle to see. But yeah, you can see this one. You can see where I've punched them, which is awesome because I can... This should go pretty quick now because uh, it's easy to see. But when you're using a lot of layers, uh, you will find it's not easy. Oh, shoot. Give me a second. Give me a second, guys. Oh, 
it's shifted slightly so I'm just going to have to fiddle with it a little bit here. There we go. Hopefully now I can stitch that in easier, I hope. Okay, now it's going. It just those first couple of stitches are the hardest because um, you can't snug it up until you've got a few of them in there. Oh, come on now, come on. And yeah, talking to your journal helps. That's the problem with working with that much paper. I probably shouldn't have put that many guys, but ah well, you'll learn. You'll learn whatever you're comfortable with. It's much easier if you only got five or ten sheets, but because it's a one signature, I wanted to go ahead and get quite a bit because I've got quite a few things planned for this, and I want to make sure it'll still leave a lot of writing space. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. You can do it. There we go. I don't want to pierce that thread. And that's the problem. Once you do that, you got issues. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm really happy with that. That's a little bit wonky, but it's not that noticeable. It's slightly over, but Make sure it's all tight. Just um, come back through and snug everything up. Because you want those signatures in really, really tight. And that's why you don't want to pierce that um, thread, otherwise you can't do this. That's good. I'm happy with that. And I'll just leave these dangling. I'll put something in the center of this one. Sometimes I snip them right off, but I do think it's prettier if you've got a few little charms hanging here and there. So. Excuse me. Oh. Must have the dust stirred up in my space. Okay. Yep. There she is. It's all sewn in now, guys. So at this point, I will stop it, and um, and then the next part we will probably deal with the <coughs> front and back cover, and then start embellishing. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're enjoying this project, and I'm anxious to see what you guys are creating. Let me know. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.